What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel. Today we're here for a new Madden 22 realistic rebuild and it is voted on by you guys on my Twitter, at PapaXC4. If you aren't following it, go check it a follow right now. You guys want to see me take over the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're here, 2021 season, 2-11 is what it is. I think for the memes, and honestly, because I think, like, again, another scenario, much like the Raiders rebuild we just did, I think Doug Peterson could be, I mean, maybe there's Eagle Bias there, but I, I do think Doug's going to be one of the hotter names when it comes to all these teams and new new coaches. I just want to go back to Doug. So for the memes, we'll stick with old Finger Bang himself, Urban Meyer, just just to have a little bit of fun, you know? It, it doesn't really matter. That's the only thing that's not realistic about it, because I think Urban Meyer... Especially as a James Robinson fan, a James Robinson fantasy owner. Uh, you know, you think, I don't want to just make you like, oh, I'm upset because I'm a, I own James Robinson fantasy. I had him last year too for the whole year. Got him like Jags had a, you know, the sickness, the illness, the bug was going around and everyone was just like, it was on Reddit. Like, is it going to be James Robinson? Let's try James Robinson. Grabbed him. It was amazing. He had like 12, 1300 yards, double digit touchdowns. And then this year, this goddamn fraud of a coach just fails to use him and puts out Carlos. Ah, it's... It's annoying, but point being, Urban Meyer probably should get... I don't, I don't know if he's going to finish the season out. It seems like maybe there's going to be a tug of war between the Jags and him of like, can he just quit and you save money some way, shape, or form? Um, but either way here, we're doing this rebuild. Uh, I will say before we start the rebuild, this rebuild is going to be a day late because I went in and did the damn thing and fully updated my 2022 draft classes. I dropped a video on the channel yesterday on how to get that... Um, in terms of where you can get it, it's only on next gen I, Xbox. I don't know why. I think honestly, in my opinion, there's no reason why it shouldn't just be all of Xbox. So if you're on the 360, if you're on the, do they still make this? If you're on the 360, the original boy, the thick boy, if you're on the Xbox One, you're on the series, you should be able to use it. Xbox should be Xbox. But unfortunately, this is only on next gen, but went through a big time update. And I mean, we're with the Jacks, man. We're going to be most likely having a top five selection and uh, take your shot. Really, any of these players, they just gotta, they gotta get their best player. Obviously, they're not gonna get a quarterback, but I'm really excited to hop in and use these new draft classes. Let's meet this Jags team. I will tell you right now, uh, the start the day thing, where like it's like live stats, was week 13. So I had to sim the last two games, force loss. When I loaded this up, um, the first thing, as soon as I hit start franchise, uh, someone poached Doug Costin defensive lineman away from me just because he was on my practice squad i had no control over that it was what i and he was a star def like very annoyed with that to be completely honest with you uh so from that we got to meet the rest of our roster starting with the quarterback trevor lawrence got the superstar dev i mean yeah franchise qb should be doing a lot better than what he is doing probably down to urban meyer just kind of just sucking the life out of the whole program but i mean you know that is a guy for this madden rebuild this year and then the four years after i think he's going to bring a super bowl to Jackson, well, it's going to be my job to put weapons around him to just do that. You look at the running back room. You have James Robinson, massive fan of J-Rob. 85, star dev, only 23, UDFA, terrific story. He is going to be our day one running back. He's going to be the guy that, we, you know, bell cow type running back. What I'm thinking is like just another sign of the disrespect to James Robinson. They drafted Travis Etienne at a Clemson in the first round. I don't want to be anti-Etienne because I'm pro J-Rob. Etienne, outstanding player. And I think that, you know, I'm just like, if he went to Miami or any of these teams that were probably looking for a running back, it'd be amazing. It'd be a perfect spot. He'd be a high ceiling player. But for us, I think we might need to get a little bit creative. I don't need, a, you know, a high upside RB2. To be completely honest with you, I think J-Rob can do the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have ETN kind of fill... Like, we're going to shuffle the roles here a little bit. I'm going to have ETN be our slot-wide receiver as well as our third down running back. He's going to be that Debo Samuel. He's going to be that Cordero Patterson for this offense. I don't know if I'm going to change his position or not, but I'm going to have ETN take the role of LaVisca Chanel. And we're going to have LaVisca Chanel, who's a gadget-type player, take the role of a goddamn wide receiver. He's going to be a wide receiver. Him and DJ Chark long-term, obviously when Chark gets back healthy next year, those are going to be the two wide receivers we try to build around. Uh, DJ Chark, height, weight, speed guy, 78 star at 6'4", with 94 speed, 84 catching. And then you have LaVisca Chanel, gadget player at this point. 6'1", 230, running back, wide receiver, sure, whatever. But uh, we're going to make him a wide receiver. He is going to be an outside playmaker. And look at the rest of our wide receiver room. We need a, you know... We hope the experiment's going to work with Travis Etienne. We got Marvin Jones Jr. for this year. Solid veteran by all counts. Agnew, good return man. I mean, he's injured right now. They got Tavon Austin, Laquan Treadwell. 
Boss City. But I think right now that's how our offense, uh, when it's healthy to start off next year, is how it's going to line up. And I know there might be some juicy free agent wide receivers, but I want to trust this process. We're going to go James Robinson running back one, ETN gadget player, but depth chart wise, he'll be the slot. And then we'll have DJ Chark and LaVisca Chanel on the outside. Look at the tight ends. They got Dan Arnold in a trade where they sent CJ Henderson, former first round pick CJ Henderson to the Carolina Panthers for Dan Arnold. Um, I mean, Arnold's not bad, but nowhere near the same upside, even just from a Madden standpoint as CJ Henderson so we're kind of stuck here with Arnold. I don't, you know, probably need to get a tight end sooner than later here. Uh, you look at the offensive line. We have Cam Robinson, who's solid. I mean, he's in a contract here. He's a guy that we don't re-sign. He's probably the best tackle on the open market. So we have the decision to make there. I didn't hate the Walker Little selection at Stanford. I think he has a lot of upside. But from a Madden standpoint, I mean, this is an O-line that got a lot going against it. There's some interesting players. So some of them can catch on and develop nicely. We might have something, but I'm, I'm a little bit worried. I mean, left tackle, either one of those guys. And then, then the question comes, do we let Cam Robinson hit the open market and develop Walker Little? Can can Walker Little in three years, you know, kind of catch up that overall? Maybe, right? You got to think about it. Norwell, solid veteran, 83. We have Ben Barge, 69, does have the dev trade. So I think we can utilize that just a little bit. Um, center, you have Brandon Linder, solid by all accounts. Very solid player. Uh, right guard, AJ Kane out with injury. So, I mean, I, I even think long term, we can get cheaper in AJ Kane, put Ben Barch there, keep Norwell at left guard. And then a right tackle, we have Jawan Taylor. Solid young lineman, solid, no dev trait though. Got to question his ceiling. So, it's, it's just an awkward, an awkward offensive line of young players with not brutal overalls, but brutal dev traits. And knowing that there's no dev trait increases for offensive linemen, it, it's, it's a tough projection here for this offensive line. And it's something that we have to get right. Flip it to the defense, a little bit better. You know, they're walking in that 3-4. Uh, Smoot's okay. So, I mean, all these guys here are serviceable. Limited ceilings. No dev traits for any of them. Flip it to the right side. Same kind of goes. That's why Doug Costin getting poached for no fault of my own. Nothing I can do. At least he had a dev trait. I think he's like 71, 70. Somewhere in that range. So, we need defensive end help. Uh, inside, you have Devon Hamilton. who's solid. 74 star dev. Under 25. So, it's definitely a player... That we can project that will be a long-term starter for us. And he's only going to get better. I could see a ceiling of, you know, mid-80s. And that's more than serviceable enough for a nose tackle. Linebacking core, you got Caleb Von Chasov. Much like the offensive line. Interesting player. Age is right. Overall's not bad. No dev trait. But unlike the lineman, he can go up dev trait scenario. So very much need to hope for that from the former first-round pick out of LSU. Middle linebacker, Miles Jack. Anchor of the defense. He's going to be... You know, the premier player on this defense right now. And probably for the majority of this rebuild. Very productive. Plays very well in Madden. Needs, needs to play very well. 85 superstars. Partner in crime. Remember Dylan Moses? Jesus. Might have fought. We, but we probably still need it. As long as we're going to be rocking in this 3-4. Another middle linebacker to pair with him long term. Right outside line, we got Josh Allen. So much like Miles Jack. I think, you know, even with the star dev. We got, we got a blue chip player here. We got a blue chip player. They're going to be able to build the defense around. Uh, so that's nice that our linebacking spots are not bad. And it's kind of in a good spot. It's healthy, healthy competition. Flip to the secondary. They got Shaquille Griffin, paid him big money, coming from the Seahawks. 85 star dev, solid, 26. Good age for a five-year rebuild for sure. Herndon, serviceable. You get Nevin Lawson, kind of the veteran role. Tyson Campbell, like that pick out of Georgia in the second round. No dev trait, but I'm thinking long term, I, I, you know, Griffin, Campbell, Her Herndon for the time being, like we can kind of build around that. To a certain degree, really hope Campbell gets a dev trade upgrade. We're going to give him on the field as much as we possibly can to get him up to a start. Because we can get him to a start. He's only 21. I, I think we could have, you know, one of these. You, 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 you map out the team. You look at the depth chart. What guys are going to be here for a full five years? And if Tyson Campbell goes up to a star, we can pencil him and Griffin in for our two corners for the five years. But got a lot of work to do to get to that point. Uh, Wingard at safety. You know, no dev trade. No dev trade for any of our free safeties. Less than ideal. And that strong safety of Rayshon Jenkins paid a lot of money to get him over from the Chargers. Solid, solid player for sure. I'm more interested in Cisco, who's an absolute ball hawk in college. I actually think right now I'm going to go Cisco as my slot corner over Herndon. Just because I think the upside's there. And then maybe next year we look at, you know, flipping Cisco to free safety and, or, or strong, you know, whatever we can do to improve that secondary. But I, I do like Andre Cisco. Another surprisingly good pick from the Jags in the draft. Special teams are what they are. You know, nothing too. Nothing too crazy. We do have currently the number two overall pick in 2022. So we're going to be looking at, you know, edge rusher. We could be looking at, you know, Aiden Hutchinson, 
Stingley in the secondary, Hamilton in the secondary, Evan Neal on the offensive line. A lot of things in play, but we got to get there first. So like, we're going to close out the regular season here in 2021. I mean, while we're here, let's take a look at our contracts. What players earn themselves a new deal? Let's go work our way from the bottom all the way up. Let's just go. Oh my God! No! 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 Vigard five million twenty. You know, no dev trait. That's a tough sell. Herndon. Another. You know, give him four years. Like that cap hit is not bad for a player. I mean, Herndon, his ceiling could be high seventies, and if that's like your third, fourth corner option, that's not bad. I. He's kind of inexpensive. Cam Robinson is going to be the toughest option here. Because, you know, the age, offensive linemen are hurt. I think I'm going to at least offer him a deal, 25. Let's give him a four-year deal. See if we'll take that, 31 million bucks. And I'm just kind of thinking, worst case scenario, we could shuffle the offensive line. He wants more money. He knows. He knows it's going to be a weak free agency class for offensive linemen. Uh, DJ Shark, let's give him four-year. That's a really nice deal, 25 million bucks. Get that locked in. Andrew Norwell pretty much going to ride any good offensive lineman into the ground. Ohio State, you know, probably one of the few players that might have some loyalty to Urban Meyer. But, I mean, that's just tough, man, with Cam Robinson. I feel like we should re-sign him. I'll give him a little bit more money, and we'll see what happens. Just I know, like, there's going to be a legitimate shot that outside, like, under 25, you'll get those linemen that are, you know, your, your Taron Armsteads, you know, those guys that are 30-plus that are win now. But, like, in terms of, like, linemen that you can still develop – Cam Robinson might be the best tackle that will be in like the first three years of free agency. I'd rather have that on our roster and find a way to make the line work, maybe mix and match a little bit, than don't have a player like Cam Robinson there. Got a breakout scenario. Uh, sure, Dwayne Smoot, 77 D end. I mean, at this point, kind of any, you know, didn't have big plans for Dwayne Smoot. We go up against the 96 Patriots, but any dev trade we could possibly get that could assist us in this rebuild, we will take it. And for he got it. All right. I mean, he's only like 26. So, I mean, maybe there's going to be something there. Plus 20,000 XP. Let's see if we can go upgrade him right now with that boost. See where he's, where he's, what is he looking at? I don't know if he was a player too. It'd be just our luck that he's in a contract year. Let's see here. Absolutely not a scheme fit at this point. Like again, he's at that age. Probably too big of a gap to make him a scheme fit. So let's just pump in these points here. Get him to an 80 overall. I think he's 27. Right? 26! All right. I mean, I can work with that. Dwayne Smoot, congratulations. Ben Bart's also going up a point there. Let me just double check quickly. We did get a new contract for Cam Robinson. Make sure Smoot's not here. It would be just fitting that he would be. We could potentially lose him. He is not. He is under contract, so that is good. Nice little boost down the season. So as we close out year one, uh, we won one game. We finished 3-14, and 14, which I think gives us the second pick. Which it does. We get the second overall pick. So whatever the lines do, be it, it's probably Kaylon Thibodeau. But it might not. They go Hutchinson. That's really, in real life, the kind of debate that we're open up here. Number two overall pick. We'll be happy with it. Whoever decides to follow us. I mean, look at our stats. I'll be honest. 15th in rushing yards per game. 14th in rushing defense per game. Solid. Could be a whole lot worse, to be completely honest with you. Uh, looking at the big picture for the remainder of the year, it's pretty much on par with what we're at in real life. Brady, huge year. Jonathan Taylor, huge year. Cooper Cup, huge year. Miles Garrett, 17 sacks. We had 11 picks for Trayvon Diggs. Yeah, big seasons. Look at Trevor Lawrence, 4,000 passing yards, 17 touchdowns of 15 picks. Yeah, he finished with more touchdowns and interceptions. That's a win. Got to be a lot better, though. We got to do a lot better job surrounding him with better weapons. Uh, running the ball, 1,000 yards for James Robinson, nine touchdowns. Cool, good for him. On the receiving standpoint, 945 and 6 for Marvin Jones. Almost 900 yards for LaVisca Chanel. No touchdowns. Jeez. Uh, that's, you know, a little less than ideal. We'll be completely honest. Like, you know, that's, what are you doing here? You're kind of just throwing your franchise QB to Wolves. How is he supposed to succeed right now? Uh, defensively, Miles Jack, 114 tackles, 5 TFLs, had a pick. We have on the sacks front, 6.5 sacks, 12 TFLs for Josh Allen, 5.5 uh, for Smoot. We have that dev trait. But really, outside of that, not good enough. Need to get more pressure on the quarterback. Two picks. I mean, that is just depressing interception numbers. Cisco, the rookie, with a pick. We have Shaquille Griffin with one pick. Tyson Campbell, the rookie, with one pick. Miles Jackson. It's just, we got to get, 
See, look, you can't go wrong. Be it like in the first round, if it is an edge rusher, Thibodeau Hutchinson. If it is a DB like Hamilton or Stingley, I think we're just pretty much going to have the you know, blue chip player. One of those guys is going to come and improve one area of defense, of our defense that just wasn't good enough this season. A quick look at the yearly awards. We're probably only going to have players for like maybe rookies. But Tom Brady is the MVP in the AFC. You got Mahomes. You got Harold Landry. Offensive rookie of the year went to Mac Jones with Trevor Lawrence coming in at number three. Defensive rookie of the year went to Patrick Sertain, PS2. We unfortunately did not have anyone. I don't think for any of these awards you're going to see any Jacksonville Jaguar. It was a rough year, but we got a lot of money. Got a lot of available salary cap. We have premier picks. This is going to be a very big offseason to kind of jumpstart this rebuild. So the Super Bowl, what? The Patriots stomped the Saints 45-10. Mac Jones, is that's just, oh, come on. You know, one of those, like, can they suck just for, like, a little bit? Uh, looking at a roster, let's see if anyone earned a dev trait based off of their, I don't think they did, but sometimes you get weird things. Sometimes weird things happen. On the offensive side of the ball, no dev traits gained or lost. On the defensive side of the ball, Josh Allen went up to superstar. Damian Wilson went up to star. And I think that is it. Wilson is looking for a contract, but he's like 28, 29. Yeah, I'm not touching that. Would rather just get younger at the position. But hey, Josh Allen up to a superstar. That is a win for the defense. Let's get into the free agency period. Uh, let's quickly get through the process, kind of trim the fat on the roster here. We can get about $2 million bucks of additional salary cap, moving Rudy Ford. I do want to try to be expensive, just because we have so many holes uh, on this squad. I think it's going to be worth, like, you know, I'm not kind of diversifying a little bit. Any little upgrade. Just even be like, just get guys that are like mid-70s with a star dev. I think it will go a long way with this squad. So, uh, you know, let's just trim the fat here a little bit in certain cases. Um, you know, I'm not going to worry about a couple hundred thousand here or there, but if there's any guys that can clear up, like Rory Robinson, got to get that contract off the books. Malcolm Brown, that is a rough contract, but at this point, you know, you know, what, what happens, maybe, maybe if we move him to D tackle, I mean, 320, you could play nose tackle, maybe his rating will go up a little bit, could just be, you know, a valuable D tackle to find his way to get a couple snaps on the field here and there, we'll do that, so he goes from 72 the 73 age hey, one point small gains it's where we're at right now um i don't really think there's a whole lot of players like linda we're not getting rid of that on the o-line we're gonna shift ben barts here to right guard he'll take over for aj can i think there's a high ceiling 70s what is he 23 24 i've used him in pink slips he gets up to the high 70s so i mean hell yeah you win with a high 70 lineman in this game um Jesus, man. There's just, like, not a lot of money. Okay, Marvin Jones, gotta be honest. I like him. Solid player. Just, we can do better with that five million. There's gotta be a wide receiver that could be upgradable there. Even though we do want to get a little cute with things with um, Travis Etienne, as soon as he comes back in the lineup, we still could be in the market for a wide receiver. I think let's just do this now. Get rid of Carlos Hyde. I don't even think I could edit Etienne's position until he gets back from injury. So, Yeah. Get rid of Bethard here. That's about a million and a half bucks. Gives us a full war chest for free agency. Let's go spend some of Tony Khan's money. So for free agents here, uh, not going to go insane all the off board, but we are going to be aggressive and try to get a lot of different targets. So look at my negotiations here. We have first up tight end Dalton Schultz, just because that's a different tight end that I've seen available for me. The Cowboys 26 with that star dev. So we're coming in with a competitive bid over the Panthers. Not overly worried. Tight end is a strong position in this draft and really in the 2023 draft. So, you know, can wait and see there just a little bit. Uh, Malik Hooker, Ohio State reuniting just a little bit there with Urban Meyer. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, Tyler Bass at kicker. And I'm looking at Mike Hughes. Scheme fit, star dev, only 25 at corner. Could come in, be that third corner with Griffin and Tyson Campbell. And with Hooker, we'd most likely kick him to strong safety. Jenkins, even though he's expensive, I mean, he can be the third safety in nickel. But I think Cisco and Malik Hooker, I could rock and roll with that safety tandem for the next couple years. All right, we missed out on Dalton Schultz, but we were able to land Mike Hughes and Malik Hooker. Big additions to our secondary. So it is now draft time, and I believe we'll just do this live because we have the number two pick in the draft. See what player we just don't have our option of. For the Lions at number one overall. And they are going to select Aiden Hutchinson. Wow. Okay. 
I mean, I think this... I personally feel like this is kind of an easier option. And... Probably going to be the option in real life. So without further ado, let's bring him in to play on the other side of Josh Allen. Probably a better scheme fit for the current state of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Kayvon Thibodeau is a Jag. I feel like I'm at a weird spot because now the more that I think about it, I mean, we have Jalen Watermeyer here, the top projected tight end, still available. We do need tight end help. But we're also like looking at our front three. We got Dwayne Smoot to hit a dev trade, but on the other side, don't really have that defensive end that can fit the mold. And at 6'5, 275, Trevon Walker kind of feels like he can fill that role. So I'd hate to go double dip on defense, but I feel like we got to. Oh, there's no dev trait there. Getting an exception, you know, an exceptional athlete here in Trevon Walker. Normal dev, a little bit of a bummer. Think of this spot. Uh, we have Brian Asamoah could come in, you know, kick him to linebacker, middle linebacker, play with Miles Jack. Another is, and again, tight end. You go back to tight end. You got Kate Otten. I, I think there's still lots of value at tight end. I don't know. That's a glitch for some reason. There's one glitch that we got is that for every other draft, there's always a random wide receiver or core. I've seen like Spencer Rattler. There's one tight end spot that is kind of bugged. I, I think at this spot, because there's still so much value, we're going to grab... Brian Asamoah, and we're going to have him ideally be the linebacker that can pair, normal Deb, but a great athlete, that can pair with Miles Jack in the middle of defense. And then in the fourth round, we go after a tight end. All right, honestly, let's, let's, let's take what we got here between Jake Ferguson, Isaiah, you have Jaleel Billingsley to a certain degree, but let's take a, We have these guys both scouted fairly well uh, and see who the best of the bunch. Jake Ferguson, great chain mover there for Wisconsin. B catching, B catching traffic. Not a bad athlete. 4'6'9's not bad. And then we have Isaiah Likely. Big time receiver. Premier player for Coastal Carolina. A catching. The combine. Kind of similar. I feel like at this point. I will go Likely, man. I, I feel like. I mean, you got you still got Trey McBride, the Mackey winner. Uh, from an athletic. A little bit better of an athlete, though. It's a tough call. But I'll go with the guy that we've done our due diligence on. We're going to grab Isaiah Likely, tight end from Coastal Carolina. Another normal dev player. But I think like most of these guys, probably going to have pretty good ratings. Ooh, got a dev trait later on. Verone McKinley, the third slot corner from Oregon. Just kind of going BPA, grabbing some athletes. And the dev trait, we will take that. So the draft has now concluded. I got a couple gems. Well, one that I was very surprised with that I'll show you guys. Uh, but I'm happy with it generally. So we got Thibodeau at pick two. For our scheme, he is going to be moving to outside linebacker. He is going to be playing on the other side of Josh Allen. So we got to make him our left outside linebacker. What is it going to do to his rating? Probably not shifted too, too much. Oh, yeah. Went up. 80. Let's go, man. That's exactly what we want. We got Trevon Walker. Normal dev. A little annoying. I mean, we got three normal dev players in a row here, but they're good overall. 69. Not bad in the second round. 68. Not bad in the third round. We're also going to shift him inside the middle linebacker. Not sure what that's going to do to his rating. It probably will stay the same because he is not like, you know, he's not a pass rusher. He has some more of a traditional middle linebacker, off ball linebacker. It does actually shift his rating down, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, Isaiah Likely, hopefully, can, you know, again, all these players probably going to see the field sooner than later. So could be a potential dev trade increase. We got Verone McKinley, the corner of Oregon, hidden dev 68. We got Thayer Munford, Ohio State playmaker. Uh, could play guard, could play tackle either. Or Travis Jones, nose tackle. Look at this. Henry Bienivalu from or, uh, Washington. Hidden dev. I'll take a hidden dev guard. A little bit of a flyer. Don't know what his upside is going to be, but why not? We got Ali Gay from LSU. 67. Logan Hall, defensive end from Houston. We got Jacques, uh, Jacques Ezert from Sam Houston. Stole the show. Insane athlete. 93 speed, 93 acceleration, 94 agility. Uh, then we get Alec Pierce, the go-to target for the Bearcats in their playoff making season. Uh, so we got two solid deaths. So, oh, no, man, a very good draft. And anytime you get Kayvon Thibodeau, it's really hard to top that. I will say, still need this probably to be the only rebuild that's realistic for the next, you know, end of the year. That won't have a year two, just because I haven't had any time to touch the 2023 class. And there would be a couple duplicate players, probably 10 or so that I had in 2023 that I had to bump up to 2022 because they're declaring early. So because of that, we, in this rebuild in year two, we will just be using a generated class. 
So from that, taking a look at our opening day roster. What are we looking like? What are the starters looking like for the Jags as we go into year two of the Urban Meyer era? On offense, you know, not a whole lot has changed. We got a healthy ETN back who's going to, again, be our gadget-type player, play a little bit in the slot, but also be more so our third down back. On the offense, we re-signed Cam Robinson. Um, no real changes. The O-line is back. We're going to go with Isaiah Likely at tight end just because he's a little bit more upside than Dan Arnold. I'll, I'll take that, you know, that four overall difference and think that Likely can probably make that up this year. And maybe have a potential breakout scenario. I'd rather, if there is a scenario for one of our normal dev tight ends, I'd much rather that opportunity go to Isaiah Likely. On the defensive side, we spent a little bit of money. Uh, nice getting that dev trait with Smoot last season. So, that, you know, him and Hamilton had the devs. I'm going to give Trevon Walker the opportunity over Robertson Harris. Again, kind of like the Isaiah Likely situation. If a dev trait scenario does come, I'd much rather go to Walker than to Robertson Harris. Uh, secondary, Mike Hughes comes in, free agency, McKinley drafted. We still got Tyson Campbell and Herndon. So a lot of competition here for the cornerback spot uh, behind Shaquille Griffin. Cisco gets the opportunity to start at free safety. We have Malik Hooker we brought in via free agency. And then you look at the linebacking core, Josh Allen, now up to a superstar dev. Excited to see him take his game to the next level. Asamoa gets an opportunity to play next to Miles Jack. And i I just be really hopeful that Asamoa, Walker, Cisco, likely at tight end. One of these four guys that's going to be playing a lot of minutes can get at least one out of the four, a dev trade scenario in this season. And then to finish it all up, of course, the bell of the ball, the number two overall pick from the 2022 draft, Kayvon Thibodeau. Let's take over. I want to see double-digit sacks right away. We got our first breakout scenario after a week three victory over the Titans. Man, we're two and one. First place in the South. Kind of was on the defense. Defensive dev traits are always easier to hit. And it is for Josh Allen looking to become an X-Factor against Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. Hold the Eagles less to 150 total yards or get Josh Allen three plus interceptions, TFL sacks. Okay, it's going to be a tough one. Let's see if we can do it. Have my faith. That'd be unreal to get that X-Factor. I'd have to spend the staff points there. To get the X-Factors enabled on the defense. And unfortunately did not hit it for Josh Allen. But a very quick turnaround. Because we have another breakout scenario. And it is for... Eh, I hope that, you know, seeing that... Isaiah Likely could be James Robinson. It's DJ Chark! Three touchdowns, 150 yards. Looking to become a superstar. Can he achieve it though? That is the question. I'm debating hopping in here. And getting him those numbers. I do like DJ Chark. We do need more playmakers on the off. I'm going to do it. I'm going to hop in. And we're most likely going to be able to get it against the 0-4 Colts. Oh, there we go. There's going to be touchdown. I mean, this is just... He, DJ Chark's the perfect C4 wide receiver. 6'4 with almost 95 speed. Got to be probably... There's, you know, there's so much more difficult wide receivers to get dev trade increases for. There's one of three. Actually trailing the Colts right now, but we are in the red zone and we are going to just pretty much force this one into DJ Chark. Hopefully he can get open, which he does. Touchdown two of three. Real bad size mismatch there on like 5'9", Bryce Callahan. What's up, baby? Take me out the day. Bing bong. So we got our touchdowns. Mission accomplished. DJ Chark. Superstar dev trait. What better time than now? Take a little pause right before the bye week because we just beat the Chiefs. You don't, you don't just beat the Chiefs in Madden 22 franchise, and we beat them 28, 24. We're seven and four, first place. Like the standings don't even load because they know that we're first place. Let's see where we are. AFC South. Yeah, two games over the Titans. That is huge. And the turnaround, man. Urban Meyer. Our faith in Urban Meyer is not just a meme, all right? It actually seems to be paying dividends. He's getting the most out of these players. Let's take a look at our contracts here. Again, got plenty of money, pretty much. You know, I, I don't know when there will come a point in time where we can't resign anybody. Oh, that's an ugly contract. Uh, let's start with Smoot here. He's, he's solid. You know, success story. Two-year deal. I don't hate that short term. We don't have to worry about really any regression. We have Linder on the offensive line. I'll give him another two-year deal. Uh, again, regression. It's just tough for the linemen. Joan Taylor, hate to offer this amount, but like, you know, what's his ceiling? 84, 85, probably come year five. That's reasonable. You know, that is a starting tackle, and those do not grow on trees. And anytime I don't have to draft linemen, 
the better. We have J-Rob at running back. Amazing story. Pay him this easy. I'll give him like a six-year deal for God's sakes. Six-year, 50 million bucks. You are amazing. And then we got Josh Allen. I think that's a reasonable deal for a pass rusher of his of his quality. And we didn't just draft Thibodeau to be Josh Allen's replacement. We bought them so they could be, you know, a tag team. Wreak havoc. Be the Hardy Boys of the friggin' NFL. And just like that, we resigned all of our big free agents. And we're still going to have decent money to play around with in the offseason. And the close of the year, too, we started a little bit down the stretch. But we won week 17 and week 18 there. 31-17 over the football team to finish 11-6. And, and in year two, we are the AFC South champions. I don't think right now you can sell the Jags on that actually happening in real life. But Urban Meyer got it turned around. And we get to find out right away in the wild card who the best team is in the South as we get to take on Derrick Henry and the Tennessee Titans. Very tough matchup. We'll sim that in just one sec. But I want to see just how did we get to this point? How did we progress to the level that we're at? Look at that big picture. I'm not seeing any of our players in the top threes. Well, that's fine because, you know, it's all about a team effort. And I guarantee from some of the Player of the Week awards that I did see... Okay, first of all, that's outrageous numbers by Trevor Lawrence. I, I think James Robinson had a terrifying year, but that's outrageous for Trevor Lawrence. I played one game with, with Chark. Obviously, it was a huge game. Don't think it changes his overall stat line that much. 5,100 yards, 35 touchdowns, 13 picks. Let's, th you know, let's let this be the norm, the standard for Trevor Lawrence. James Robinson, almost 1,400 yards, 22 touchdowns. That's fairly disgusting. Four rushing touchdowns for Trevor Lawrence. So he's at 39 total on the year. Very good. Seven touchdowns there for ETN. Keep finding a way to get him involved in the offense. He also had, you know, 300 yards there. Five for J-Rob. Seven for Agnew. Seven and five for Isaiah Likely. That's solid. 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns for Chanel. 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns for DJ Chark. Let's go. Defensively, 142 tackles, three sacks for Miles Jack. We got 10 sacks, double digits that we were looking for for Kayvon Thibodeau. Eight sacks for Josh. I would love that to be a little bit higher, but I'm still, I'm, I'm satisfied. Seven and a half sacks for Trevon Walker. Seven for Dwayne Smoot. Like that's, that's like a minimum. You know, and maybe that's wishing, wishful thinking, you know, too, that's too high of expectations. I don't want to see anything really drop. I want this amount of sacks between these four players for the remainder of this rebuild. Interceptions could be better. Uh, Mike Hughes are big for, well, I'm going to say big, but one of our better free agent signs tied for first with two picks, two for Griffin, two for the rookie McKinley too. Hidden Dev rookie. Uh, he came out with Star Dev, whatever, work in progress. Nice little piece to develop going forward. We had the number one offense in the NFL. And again, like that one game I played is not going to really decide. We are legitimate. MVP Trevor Lawrence coming in at number seven. James Robinson at number 10. Two MVP candidates in the AFC Office player went to Patrick Mahomes. Trevor Lawrence at number five. James Robinson at seven. Defensive player of the year went to Miles Garrett. Offensive rookie of the year went to Isaiah Likely. Okay, I mean, he's sitting there on normal dev. It's not automatic, but I would love for him to get a dev trade increase. Uh, defense, we're going to win the Kayvon Thibodeau, Trevon Walker at three, Verone McKinley at five. So a lot of production. I mean, these guys get to see the field a lot, but they're they're paying dividends. Trevor Lawrence was the number three quarterback. James Robinson was the number three running back. Best wide receiver went to Renfro, just beating out DJ Chark, who was at two, LaVisca Chanel at number four. Uh, best lineman, no one there. Best D lineman... Unfortunately, no one there. Best linebacker, Kayvon Thibodeau at five. Josh Allen at eight. Best DB went to Mike Hilton. Uh, I don't even have anyone there. And the best kicker, hey, Tyler Bass, bringing over him from the Buffalo Bills and free agency. He comes in at number four. So let's see. I can't wait. We have the number one offense in the NFL. What are the odds we put up, like, no touchdowns here against the Titans in year two playoffs? I mean, it's still early. I wasn't expecting to make the playoffs. Wow. I wasn't expecting to make the playoffs until year three four year three maybe and the fact that we got a win we already have a playoff win that we kind of hang our hats on divisional like a rivalry win that's a great start 31 we kicked the shit out of them not a great game but look at the defense three picks on ryan Tannehill. um buck 50 we out dueled james robinson out dueled derrick henry i'd love to see jay if jay drops it goes up doesn't go up to superstar i'm gonna be a little peed off uh viscous chanel okay he had a touchdown defensively what do we got here? Three sacks from Josh Allen, two for Dwayne Smoot, and we had picks from Mike Hughes, Asamoa, and Veron McKinley. So two of our rookies getting involved here, and just like that, we got one win. The train keeps on rolling. We run into the juggernaut, who we beat in the regular season. We saw that. That's where we talked about uh, midseason and contracts. We've already beat the 9-8 Kansas City Chiefs, who are way better than 9-8. 
Can we be their kryptonite here in the divisional? Come on. Oh, <laughs> let's go. Okay, 40. Like we're doing, you know, I never, I never cheese. You know, I feel like, you know, it's almost, I know my, I know my audience. And when we lose and we get a rage, it's almost as good as when we win and get a Super Bowl. This is as authentic as it gets. If you ever had any doubts, 40 to 36. We have a year two juggernaut that is just unstoppable. If we win the Super Bowl, I remember we had a, what was it, the Vikings? We won a Super Bowl with the Vikings with Kirk Cousins. I will say that this will at least like kind of tie that for the most ridiculous Super Bowl. But if we, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Still got a lot of work to do. Still going to win the AFC Championship game. 351 yards, two touchdowns, Trevor Lawrence. ETN had a couple big plays for us. J-Rob, three rushing touchdowns. Visigas Chanel had a big time game, 148 yards and a touchdown defensively. We got a uh, sack from Miles Jack, interception from Rayshon Jenkins. I mean, this defense is just getting hot at the right time. We already knew we came in this number one offense, but the defense is getting just, come on, man. 10 and 7 Steelers. Probably the last to run for Ben Roethlisberger. That's the one thing I will check before we go in. Again, no cuts for doing this live. I feel like that's, that's we're just going to, we got to keep doing it live because we don't, if we, as soon as we stop, we're going to get some shenanigans and we're going to lose. They have Mar Mariota. For the love of God. Okay, now that now I'm worried because we should clearly kick the shit out of the Steelers. But there's a weird way of like, you know, punishing you when you should win. And there you go, right? Yeah. Lose to Mariota. We beat Mahomes. We beat Derrick Henry. We lose to freaking Mariota. Dude. I mean, that's a hell of a run if we can build on this. Like, come on, man. What happened here? I mean, it wasn't really like we lost to Mariota. Good game from Trevor Lawrence. Was it uh, Najee? No, not really. I mean, they shut down our rushing attack, but there's nothing. I'm not seeing crazy stat. I mean, it was a close game. Um, both had a pick. You know, sacks. You know, that's just that's like one of those ones you look at the box and like, how did we lose? And the only thing I can see right now, they didn't let our run game take over. Well, that's a hell of a way to just end year two. Game away from making the Super Bowl. Let's build on that in year three of this rebuild. Super Bowl recap. Well, you know, would you rather lose to Dallas the Super Bowl or not just have that loss to Dallas on your record? You know, that's the kind of question you get. Dak gets himself the MVP. Dallas wins the Super Bowl. Let's see if we have any dev traits. I mean, expected. I'm expecting James Robinson to go up dev trait. Uh, Isaiah Likely was rookie of the year on a normal. So, like, I, you know, we already know that's broken. He should obviously get a dev trait, but I don't think he did. Which, but at least he's playing well. You know, it's not all about dev traits at the end of the day. As long as your guys can play well in your scheme, that's all that really matters. But I will be pretty bad if James Robinson's still on star dev. He should be bumped up to superstar. He was a touchdown machine, 22 touchdowns. He did get. And Lawrence is an X Factor. Let's go. What did he get? What's his ability? Brick wall. What is this? Ball in the pocket. Packers break the first sack. I feel like that's not the ability that we want. Um. Like, I mean, I'm trying, almost just trying to think, like, I feel like we'll put Omaha. I feel like Omaha is the best one. That's, like, the Peyton Manning ability. But it's also, like, what the, there's, is there, like, a, an ability that's better in the sim that's tested? Like, C4, if you're running sim, you got to put that ability. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if I find it. Like, you know, um, so we got the dev trade for James. LaVisca Chanel went up to Superstar. That is good. That was unexpected. I really only expected J-Rob to go up. Did not think Trevor Lawrence would get X-Factor, but that is huge for this offense going forward. Flip to the defense and uh, not seeing any devs. But Thibodeau was hidden dev. Comes out superstar to really the surprise of no one. Highest ceiling edge rusher in the class. Uh, and I can tell you from my draft class, I think there's two two superstars. And we got one of them in Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, Would have been nice between like this trio, between Walker, Asimo, and Cisco because they played heavily as rookies. One of them could have went up dev trait, but... But, you know, we got so much, so much overwhelming dev trade increases on the offense between, you know, running back, quarterback, and wide receiver. I'm not going to be salty. So for free agency, we had big money, and this is one of the more crazier free agency players. You never see these names. Nick Bosa, never there. Terry McLaurin, never there. And then we got Denzel Ward. It's a realistic period. This wasn't realistic. I'd probably be able to sign two, if not try to get all three. But I had to kind of break it down like this. One, Nick Bosa, I've used him before. We've had him in a Niner rebuild when we did with Trey Lance. 
and like he never got double digit sacks once that could be the scheme for sure but also he's not really a scheme fit for our front three we you know he's not going to play outside linebacker we have Thibodeau and Josh Allen so it just doesn't make sense then you look at Terry McLaurin love me some scary Terry even though I'm an Eagles fan but the fact that DJ Chark now a superstar went 1300 yards LaVisca Chanel 1300 yards it's just you know it's it's it'd be overkill like why not rock and roll with Chark and Chanel now you look at Denzel Ward scheme fit in the secondary, plug-and-play starter, we've come in with a ridiculous bid, which, you know, is, is very much on the fringe of realistic or not. But it's one of those things, like, if he's going to sign with us, he's signing with us. We have blown the Eagles bid out of the water. And, uh, yeah, let's hey, let's just do, let's bring it live. Live reaction. It's going to be annoying. Because it is one of those things. If, if, like, this offer went through and he didn't sign with us, and if I knew that in advance, I probably would still try to go overkill, and maybe get Bosa, and then bulk him up or something crazy like that. But we are putting all of our eggs in the Denzel Ward basket. That's a that'd be a huge get for this secondary. Does he want to come to Jacksonville? And he does. Landing Denzel. What's well, one of the biggest free agency signings we have been able to land in any of our realistic rebuilds? That is a massive get for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's go. All right, so what we're looking for in this draft, we're at pick 30. I need a defensive end. So for our three, you know, we need a guy that's 300 pounds. Uh, I need a tight end. Just to add more depth with Isaiah Likely, even though he won defensive or offensive rookie of the year. Still feel like, you know, no depth trait yet for him. But you could always try to improve that spot. Get younger on the offensive line. Uh, I think you could also argue maybe a middle linebacker could be something that's on the cards. And just right now, you're not seeing any first rounders or anything crazy like that. Uh, there is a tight end that I was able to, like, I think I really want to get him. Uh, it's Cuff Hedson out of South Carolina. But he's day three, so we don't have to rush to get him. He has B run blocking. is the only rating we've had unveiled. But very good combine. Second in the 40. Three cone, seventh, 20 yards, second. Good vertical. I mean, everything you look for in a, in a project tight end. So I feel fairly confident he's going to be good. So going on as far as, like, the best true player on the D-line. We had two first-round DNs that fit our scheme. You know, 293, 297. We have Kyrie Kirkland, B-Tackle is the only thing we have unveiled. Uh, it's not bad. I just wish the 40 was a little bit better. Uh, but you like seeing the 30 on the bench press. Third there. Three in the three cone. Fourth in the shuttle. I mean, that is actually pretty good. I don't know if I want to be, like, too biased when it comes to it. Like, that guy's just way too far. I actually think that might actually be a solid pick. It's really going to be between him and Manny Levingston from Virginia. Another projected first rounder. We have B Block Shed. And then we look at the physicals. First on the 40 yard dash, uh, six on the bench press, fifth on the three cone, second on the 20 yard shuttle. And I feel like the fact that he just, I think this is the guy. This got to be the guy we get. I mean, we can look back when all is said and done. I'm going to write it down so I can double check it. Uh, I think I'm going to go Levingston over uh, Kyrie Kirkland. And we'll see just, you know, if we made the right pick or not. We're still learning the new draft mechanics and everything. So let's see. Manny Levinston. Oh, normal dev. Come on. I mean, there's still a chance. I mean, those stats look good. I draft him again. B block shed. B awareness. A play rec. Smart player. I mean, it'll be something like a 77, 78, something like that. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be too mad about it. But we will definitely go look at Kirkland when all is said and done. So let's take a look at our draft recap. I, you know, we didn't do great for dev traits, but I want to see high ratings. Okay, hit and miss. So, Levingston, 74. 74 is not bad. Like, that is, like, if you're getting a normal dev player, I think that's the cutoff. I'd say anything lower than 74 is probably fairly disappointing, but he's going to be able to come in and contribute right away. Here, we went straight combine. The, the, the skills were bad. He had, like, F in coverage. I'm like, man, these things don't mean anything. Uh, mean a little bit. He's still a solid player, but that, that's, that's a... As bad of a bust pick as you're going to see me draft. Follow it up with Henson, the tight end that I would day three pick. 72, normal. Uh, looked really solid. Can come in right now and compliment. Be a nice tight end too. Uh, we got Knicks here. 66, hidden dev running back. Again, don't really need him because, you know, he's going to be RB3, but it is what it is. We got Nelson Matthews, 70, normal. We got a 62 quarterback, Griggs. We have 62 uh, running back, Levy. Just kind of going for... Uh, the better he had like bees a couple bees there and at this point you're just kind of shooting fish in a barrel but we got a hidden dev player a nice tight end we got the tight end and d tackle we wanted and just falling in love with the combine punished us here a little bit with probably probably my worst like if you weighing my worst picks ever since we've had this new scouting update uh that is probably up there so we're just gonna search by overall grade we're looking for kirkland so lev um 
I mean, none of these guys I was even really considering, to be honest with you. Uh, we just want to find Kirkland. We know our guy, 74, normal. And Kirkland's here, 74, with the hidden dev trait. So he would have been a little bit better off. Let's see what the dev is. If it's star, I can easily... I'm not losing any sleep at night. If it's superstar, those are the ones that are kind of just a pain in the ass. God damn it! So we're doing for year three. And I mean, I'm very excited just to see what... An X Factor Trevor Lawrence is going to be able to execute in our offense with a DJ Shark superstar, James Robinson superstar, and LaVisca Chanel superstar. The offensive line comes back, remains the same, get that cohesion. Uh, offensive rookie of the year, Isaiah likely is back. Well, obviously he's back, but he's back better than ever. Hopefully, and he's looking for a dev trade scenario. It's kind of cool. I love Ezard. Sam Houston, small school player. I remember uh, last year, he, he like kind of stole the show during the FCS playoffs. He's going to have a chance this year to kind of break out. Him versus ETN for that slot role. We'll probably still keep ETN. It's been working out for us a little bit. But we'll, we'll see. And then you flip on the defense. Now, here's the only thing that's annoying is that Levingston, our first round pick, you know, not better than Walker on Ford. Like, we really needed that dev trade. Knowing that we passed on a superstar dev. For a non-one, is a little bit of a mulligan. We know it's not a mulligan. Landing someone like Denzel Ward in free agency. That is an insane get for the secondary. Him, Griffin, and Hughes are a hell of a combination. Go with Hooker and a developing Cisco. Would love to him get a dev trade. Three superstar linebackers, Thibodeau, Miles Jack, and Josh, uh, Josh Allen. We've asked them all kind of work in progress. Wish I would have been able to you know, draft a nice linebacker. Sometimes they grow on trees. It's one of the easier positions to draft. Just wasn't a great draft for linebackers. So we'll take a look at that next year, but still not a lot of holes on this team. I am firmly expecting. We fell short a little bit last year in year two, AFC Championship game. I want to get back to that dance. All right, we'll cover week nine. This is the first thing of interest that's happened all year. We have a potential breakout scenario. We're four and four. It's been a grind, but we're only a win back behind the Colts for first place in the South. So a little bit of ups and downs, and we have a breakout scenario. We'll take that look at that last. I want to look at the contracts. Now, with that massive deal that we offered to Denzel Ward, things are going to be a little bit tighter, but I am still fairly confident that we can resign most, if not all, of our players because we have an insane war chest. So first up, we're going to get Ben Barts. Very solid, nice project guard that's developed into a fine starter. Same with Devon Hamilton. Let's give him four-year deal, $30 million every day of the week. Norwell, let's continue just to kind of ride him into the ground. Actually, I'll give him a, give him a one-year. That's an expensive one year, but yeah, it's one of those things. It's, it's clearly, I, I would bet a lot of money. I'd bet like a hundred bucks that if we let him walk, he would be the highest rated left guard in free agency. So we'll just save ourselves that frustration. We have LaVisca Chanel is developing very nicely for us, already up to a superstar dev. Let's lock him in for the remainder of the rebuild. Shaquille Griffin. Now, this is where things get a little interesting because we brought in Denzel Ward, but again, I think it's kind of the situation at 28, two year deal. Shouldn't really have to worry about any regression. Uh, and then you have Miles Jack, who obviously pretty much just signed the dot line. Very important player for us. Always going to lead this team in tackles. Super. He's, he's one of the best linebackers in Madden. I mean, in real life, he's really good. But at least in terms of Madden, I think he's a top five line, line linebacker in Madden, especially in the Sim. So literally, we got everyone we wanted signed. And we have 50 million bucks of playing around money this upcoming offseason. So for that, we got contracts settled. It is time to look at the breakout player. We'd love it to be one of the normal dev players on defense. And it's actually Devon Hamilton. We just locked in. He's on star. So he's going to be looking to go to superstar. Hold the Cardinals less than 75 yards rushing. Very tough, especially with Kyler Murray. But, you know, there's a chance. D linemen, when they do get dev trade scenarios. And this would be like a nice little silver lining to not drafting that superstar. Is that if we can make Hamilton our own superstar. They only had 10 points. I think there's a chance 50 50 ah come on god damn it all right another let's try this again dev trade scenario josh allen looking to become a superstar x factor hold the texans to less than 150 yards or hit those performance indicators of three and eight so they're having a little bit of a rough go i mean we're six and six we need to win this game to get some momentum going into the bye week so let's take a look we lost but it's a low scoring game there's always a chance Man, swing and a miss. Seems like a mulligan year here in year three for the Jags. All right, this week 18 game against the Titans could be for the playoffs. It might have been. Nine and eight. We were eight, you know, the battles of the eight and eights. Did they sneak in? If so, that'd be a little annoying, but it adds to the right. They didn't even make it. So I guess that that's a really, took 11 wins to just make the playoffs. 
that's a tough year. You know, makes it a little less frustrating. Uh, but what is insane is that we have one of the best teams in the game and bottom 10 defense across the board. Bottom 10 offense. What happened, man? Like, I, what happened? We got, we just, we earned, earned superstar dev, superstar X Factor dev for Trevor Lawrence last year. And then this year, leads our offense to be 24th. 4,100 yards, 25 touchdowns, 15 picks. Like, what the fuck happened? What happened? What happened? Huge year, James Robinson, 1,200 yards, 23 touchdowns. Uh, Ezer with 1,000. Chanel with 1,000. A little bit of a down year from Chark, but, I mean, that production just went to Ezer, which is fine, especially if he can work himself into a dev trade, which he's on normal. I think a normal guy gets 1,009, probably worthy of a uh, dev trade increase. Defensively, Miles Jack, pretty good. 130 tackles, three sacks, three picks. Sacks are just way down. And the fact that we have 92 superstar in Thibodeau, we have 92 superstar in Allen, and we got barely 10 sacks between them. Uh, not what you want to see. And then you go to the secondary, and you're, you know, anytime your middle linebacker leads your team in picks, more often than not, that is uh, not what you're looking for. So it's just uh, things were looking good last year. Maybe we like the smell of our own ass too much and get kind of bit this season. Very, very disappointing. No one performed up to LaVisca Chanel and James Robinson. Are the only, LaVisca Chanel, James Robinson, Miles Jack. Those are the three players that can hold their head high. Everyone else, down year, what's going on? Need that reality check. Got a lot of money to spend, you know? These, these Some of these guys could get upgraded upon, I guess, in this offseason. That's a brutal year. Absolutely brutal season from the Jags. As we clear out the lockers, the 49ers defeated the Steelers in the Super Bowl with Dre Greenlaw becoming the MVP. That's a little weird, but I like seeing you know, as long as it's not the Browns, Cowboys every year or the Chiefs and Saints. Those are kind of wins. Let's see if we have any silver lining dev trade increases. That'd be nice. I'm looking for Jacques Edzer, uh, Ed Ezard on the offense. Of course, he didn't get shit. Uh, Knicks are hitting dev running back superstar. That's something. Sure. Defensively, Miles Jack up to an X factor, and that is it. So I mean, you know, it's not bad. You know, this free age period is rough when like Caleb Foshay saw is like one of the best. Oh, this is a awful free agency class. I'm not seeing uh, anything that's even remotely interesting to, to bring in. I mean, left tackle, there's a lot of money, but like, you know, we got a big contract with Robinson. We, we made that commitment to Robinson. Like, Tunsil, maybe? Um, uh, let's just... Um, 878. You know, you know what? I'll try Tunsil. It's a big contract. I'll we'll go eight and a half, eight, three quarters. Try that. Yeah. That, you know, there you go. 10 point upgrade at tackle. That's a lot of money. We'll have to try to hopefully get out of Cam Robinson's deal if this can go through. But maybe that's what we need more stability up front. Nice. Able to land Larry Tunsil. Let's just double check. I, I don't think we'd have an out on uh, Robinson's deal, but it was signed a couple years ago. It might not be that bad of a cap hit. Oh, yeah. It's it's still it's still pretty bad, but we'll take that upgrade. And may, with Robinson 77, like that just opens things up that if there's like real bad regression from Norwell or something like that, or like we only have Norwell this year and he's a 79, and then we look at, you know, Getting cheaper and maybe kicking Cam Robinson into into right guard, left guard, one of those spots. Or at least this year, kind of a consensus. Like there's only one guy that I'm even really considering, and that is Gerald Flowers, the middle linebacker from Virginia Tech, 6'1", 236. Um, in terms of other positions, you could look at free safety. We have Kevin Parker from USC, but I just don't have a whole lot of information for the key ratings to kind of decipher. The 40 is pretty bad. Everything else was solid. So like he could be, you know, an okay fine player. Uh, I'm not really going to double dip on the D-line. Had bad luck last year. Plus, we have a lot of investment there. Maybe just rock and roll with Trevon Walker. 
Uh, wide receiver could be an interesting one, but again, Ezra had a thousand yards. You, you know, you got to go with the value of production necessarily over the base rating and the depth rate. He's working in our scheme, so and, and re neither one of those wide receivers was amazing. They look okay, so I think for just overall need, let's go grab Gerald Flowers. We have a tackle is the only key rating. And then you look at the combine, third in the forty yard dash, three cone. The twenty yards not perfect, but it's pretty good. The bench press is good. Uh, there's no way this guy sucks. I'm gonna guess seventy four Hindev. And he has the hidden dev, and he looks amazing. Reminds me of like, um, to a, to a, to a lesser degree, uh, Hughes from our Eagles franchise. Very similar athletically. So look at our draft recap. Hit on the first. I simmed it out after the first two picks. Kind of like a walk off. Um, it, I, I didn't really need to show off this one because it was just BPA. Uh, but in the first round, 76. He's already happy to be there. 77. Gerald Flowers. Hidden dev trade. Excited to see him come in and play next to Miles Jack. Second round, it was a running back, Justice. Great name, Curtis Justice, 75. Hidden Dev. That just kind of goes to show how bad our board fell because I wanted a wide receiver. Nothing. Like, you know, and all the rest of these guys here are all normal devs. Um, but hey, we'll take that two hidden devs, especially Joe Flowers, who's going to probably be a front runner for Defensive Rookie of the Year for how much he's going to play this year. Year four for the Jaguars. And we have the most stacked running back room that exists. I mean, man, and it's just like one of those things, man, you can't really get a lot of good value for running backs. Because, like, we could trade to see if we can get an upgrade over Ezard, upgrade over Likely, or anything like that. And it's just running backs have, you know, it's rough value there. So, this is our team, led by Trevor Lawrence. Absolutely needs a bounce back here, especially for a 91 X factor. Should all to an 88, 87 for DJ Chark, 94 for J Rob. O line, we throw in Laramie Tunsil. Hopefully, that helps things out. Flip to the defense, uh, very good defense last year on paper. Didn't quite play out that way, unfortunately. We got four star dev corners led by 94, Denzel Ward. Um, you know, we throw in flowers there. We absolutely need to bring that to our defense there. Pair that with Miles Jack, which I think gives us, from a 3-4 standpoint, I think the best linebacking core in the NFL Need them to prove it. Need them to make this defense, at minimum, a top 10 defense. Need Trevor Lawrence, at minimum, to play like a top 10 quarterback. And I think here in year four, the Jags will get back to where they belong, and that is on a lengthy playoff run. All right, we just kicked the shit us like 47, 41. I don't even remember who it was. But we got two dev traits. It's probably not going to hit. DJ Chark, I already know it's not going to hit. But let's take a look here at, we beat the Titans 47, 41. Uh, then we got Kayvon Thibodeau looking to become an X-Factor. That one's a little bit more realistic to hit. I won't even... I'm not even going to trigger DJ Check. I know he's not going to hit it. But Thibodeau going up to X-Factor would be pretty dope. See if we can carry this momentum. In a winnable game against the 1-2 Jets. We're undefeated at 3-0. and And we fall flat. Uh, I'm already gonna, this is going to be the, the DJ Chark one. And it's going to say he did it. Oh, no. Actually, he did not. Kayvon Thibodeau did not. I'm not even going to trigger the Chark. We did not hit it with 16 freaking points of offense. Uh, let's just see if we made the right to call here. Nick Bosa, remember he was a top free agency target? He went to Minnesota, and uh, yeah, they kicked the shit of us as well. Great. Awesome. Fantastic. Still first place in the South, though. All right, we are absolutely crushing this. Like, it just shows last, like, Madden's so weird. Like, if there was injuries on, and injuries absolutely ruin rebuilds, to be completely honest with you. But if there was injuries on, I would get it, all right? Some years, you just, you know, your starters, a couple starters go down, you can't, it's an uphill battle. But th with no injuries on, like, there should be a level of consistency that your good team just plays like a good team, and you pub stomp these shitty teams. And that's, uh, you know, you know, and again, I complain, it's a valid complaint, but you'd already know, if you play this game, you know that this stuff happens. You just gotta kind of have to endure it or make your team so good that it can't kind of rob you a little bit. We're 8-2 and two right now, first place in the South, literally the only two games we lost were the two that we kind of brought live this year. But let's look at contracts. These are the last negotiation periods. These are guys we want for the full five years. And boy, oh boy, we got to get one contract locked in. 220, I don't even want to think about it. Let's just get them on. Get, let's, and then try to fit everyone else around them. Um, I mean, really? To be honest with you? I mean, we'll get Linder. Because I, I guarantee there's not going to be a better center on the open market if he wants to take that money. I, I think we... For normal, he's just not regressing. Nine million bucks. I feel like that is a spot we could be cheaper at. You know, we have, you know, Cam Robinson could go in. He'll be like 79, slide him there to guard, and then use that nine million bucks to, to maybe getting, you know, a playmaker at safety 
or something like that. And I think same goes for Smoot. Could probably upgrade that. We don't need ETN. Malik Hooker could be a better upgrade on the open market. So I think we're going to kind of take a wait and see approach. I think Cisco, that's, an, that's a reasonable deal. Especially if we kick the can down the road a little bit. Less than a million bucks for a guy that in case there's not an open market, at least we have a solid safety. 77 normal that we can plug and play back there. But uh, some of these veterans, I think we'll, at, at worst, we'll let them at the open market and we'll bring them back if there's no upgrades possible. God damn. I thought we beat the Packers 35 nothing. Thought that'd be good enough to get us the one seed. And of, yeah, it's fucking Chiefs, man. Uh, we wouldn't even get. There's two teams. The Bengals as well. Even though we won five straight, we would have. We're the third team in the AFC, which we would have been easily the first team in the NFC. It's about time that it feels like it's been forever that the NFC has been much stronger than the AFC. So, you know, it's about time that pendulum kind of swifted over this way. Let's take a look at how uh, we got to this point. Carson Strong is out. I guarantee he's. Want to guess? Let's guess what team he's on. The Saints, right? Put up those kind of numbers. Let's just just out of just just out of curiosity, is Carson Strong, the quarterback of the Saints. What? Who else? What other team has a cheesy playbook like that? I want to try to guess before it's. Oh, okay. Okay, he's the, the Brady successor. Look at our team, Trevor Lawrence. Good bounce back here. Forty-seven hundred yards, thirty-four touchdowns, thirteen picks. I'll take it. 1,400 yards, 22 touchdowns for, you know, MVP offensively for us every year. He's crushing it. James Robinson, J-Rob. 13-13 for Chark. Had a down year last year. 9-10 for Chanel. Almost 1,000. You could round that up. You know, not bad. Def I want to see these sacks up. I'll tell you that right now. 110 tackles, 4.5 sacks, and a pick for Miles Jack. We got 12 from Josh Allen, 9.5 Thibodeau, 7.5 Trevon Walker, I don't know, man. It's just, I, I, again, also at the end of the day, it's, it's tough unless you're like X-Factoring and juice to the gills like Miles Garrett or Khalil Mack. It, it's, it is really tough in a 3-4 Madden 7 to get consistent unless you're trying to cheese it, find the best 3-4 playbooks. If you're just running base defense for whatever your 3-4 team is, you're probably not going to have huge sack numbers for some reason. But I will take five picks for Mike Hughes. Very nice there. We've had the third offense in the NFL. Quick look at the yearly awards here. Joe Burrow is the MVP. Um, AFC, we might, we might have a award winner or two, maybe. DJ Chark, wide receiver of the year. That could go bode well for him going up to an X factor, which would be pretty dope. Mike Hughes, DB of the year. He's been stuck on a star since we brought him in. Would be cool if he goes up to a superstar to throw one of those guys in our secondary. But it is just year four, so it's still another opportunity just to sim it, see if we can go on a little bit of a run. Last time we made the playoffs, we went on a run. AFC Championship game. Let's see what we can do here. First up against Miles Garrett and the 11 and 6 Cleveland Browns and the Jacksonville Jaguars. One and done. 35 28. They fall to the Cleveland Browns. Not nearly good enough from our defense, especially giving up. Uh, not even necessarily giving up. Offensively, I mean, defensively, you can't give up 35 points. Offensively, you can't just wait till the fourth quarter to do all your scoring. Um, wasn't neither quarterback had a great day. Both running backs, fairly similar stat lines. Uh, Jalen Tolbert had a hell of a year there out of South Alabama. Chenault was solid for us defensively. I mean, hey, you keep Miles Garrett off the sh sack sheet. Your linemen did their job. Tunsil did his job. Just, just a really disappointing year to be one and done. So it all kind of stacks itself up for year five to turn this around and finally win a Super Bowl with, I would almost like to say, a God squad here in Jacksonville. As a close of the year, the Ravens beat the Niners. So that's a rematch from... Like 10 years ago, uh, Lamar Jackson winning the MVP. And everyone knows I am a Lamar Jackson fan, so that's pretty cool to see. As we leave the building, we have some upgrades. I want to see Dev Trucks. I want to see DJ Chark. I want to see Mike Hughes. I want to see some of these other guys. So, yes, we did get the X Factor for Mr. DJ Chark. Continue to make him a deep threat. One of the best deep threats. I mean, from like a just a build standpoint. Outstanding. Outrageous. They 6'4". With that kind of speed for his ability. We got Yak him up. Let's see. Can we give him a Moss? Do they still have that as ability? Uh, I mean. It's a kind of shitty move. We'll go double me, I guess. Sounds more up in his wheelhouse. Uh, that is our dev trade on offense. On defense, yeah. I want to see Mike Hughes. And it would be nice if we get a linebacker. Holy shit. Mike Hughes didn't go up, but we drafted a superstar X-Factor. Gerald Flowers, I think. 
We did. Let's go. I don't know. That might be our first. There's probably someone that's a lot better remember. Some of you guys that watch this probably have memories like an elephant. I cannot recall the last. I think we got a safety once. Maybe a running back. But very few. Like, this is easily, I would say, like, no more than five superstar X Factors, including Gerald Flowers here. Let's go. What a hit. Definitely makes up for passing on the super. Imagine we got that super guy last year. It's going to be like the rebuild of all rebuilds. So. We have about $30 million of salary cap. I'm going to be looking here. Defensive end, if there's a big upgrade. Free safety, if there's a big upgrade. Malik Hooker's hitting the open market. Um, and then offensively, you have some, you know, Norwell's going to be hitting the open market. Um, let's, let, let, you know, let's spend our money wisely. Try to get that one guy that can that can take this team over that, over that hump and get us into the Super Bowl and also win that Super Bowl. Okay, here we go. Wow, it's 1 a.m. I'm working overtime to get this video to you guys. So let's see if Madden pays me some dividends here for working overtime, going the extra mile, and hooking me up in our final free agency period where we had a little bit of spending money. So first I'm looking at Draymond Jones, superstar, and defensive end coming to the top bit here. Uh, and then I got to bring back Malik Hooker because the safety market was, you know, kind of like we've talked about this whole rebuild is like anytime we let a guy go, I'm like, he's got to be the best guy on the open market. Just wait and see. And, of course, at safety, there's something. I do plan on drafting safety. Sometimes you can find absolute studs at safety. But, you know, I feel like it's a little bit of a, an emergency. If we don't get him, it's not that big of a deal because 100% I'm going to draft the best safety available for us during the draft. Uh, but, yeah, and then, you know, we're just going to keep a dream on Jones. I could spend a little bit more money, but nothing that really jumps off the page as a move we need to make. Like, actually, can I get the punter? This could actually be an upgrade for us if we can land Jack Fox the punter. So we'll actually give him a decent offer because our punter's only like a 73. So what? Hey, add an 87 punter. That's going to be something in the algorithm. We'll come with a big time bid. Let's see if we can land these guys. I mean, I feel like this team is like borderline God squad. It's not the highest overall. We've had teams in the mid 90s, but I think like so far, I guess considering this team's, you know, sub 90 in all of those categories. You know, offense and defense. This might be our best sub-90 overall rebuild team. Wow. I mean, we overpaid on both Draymond Jones and Malik Hooker, and they said, nah. Okay. I mean, let's I mean, look at our rankings. Dominant. Rushing defense could be a little bit better. Is there anyone here that we can get that's still an upgrade? Um, I mean, Stephon Tewitt, he's a guy that I have signed in a lot of rebuilds, but, I mean, at this point, we need help on the defensive line. I did not expect both of those deals to fall through. So let's see if we can get Stefan to it here. And if that doesn't work, uh, I'm not exactly sure what else we can do. But if we get Stefan to it, solid run stuffer helps improve that run defense that we do want to try and get better at. Let's see if we can land Stefan to it, which we do. Now let's roll on into the draft. Draft the best safety we can and get into year five. All right, there's actually a couple decent safeties at you know the various levels throughout this draft, so we might take a couple swings here. Uh, but Joiner's not particularly good. One of the players that we had in for a private workout, think it needs to be the guy here, Randy McCall from Michigan State. He is a scheme fit, B zone, B hit power, C tackles, not the best. But you look at it, he's a ski, you know he fits us for you know top fits. You look at the physicals, fourth in the 40, first in the three cone, fourth in the 20, good vert. Good pro day. Randy McCall, welcome to Jacksonville. No dev trade. Ah, oh, come on. But again, I, I think there's two other safeties I do think we should have a chance to get second, third round, whatever. Just keep, you know, that's, you know, eventually one of these guys just keep throwing at a wall. One of them's going to stick. Okay, so we actually took a bunch of swings at safeties. Uh, never strike gold from a dev trade standpoint. Whoa. Okay, 77 for Randy McCall. Hell of a base overall rating. So we actually did draft a good safety that just didn't have um, anyone with depth traits. 70, normal, 66, 65. Uh, just out of curiosity. Just to, I want to see where that guy stacks up. He might be one of the best players in the draft. Oh, it's Kayvon Thibodeau's brother. Teron Thibodeau. Um, so Randy McCall, yep, yeah, tied for third highest rated player. Uh, Steven Florence. I mean, we didn't have a chance to draft him. There's your hidden dev safety. Uh, Linton did have a chance to draft him. Don't ah, that's the guy. I'm not gonna lie, he didn't look. He didn't look anything special. Looked kind of like chicken shit. 
Should just have a star dev. Just have a star dev so I can move on from this draft that doesn't. For fuck's sake, oh, I want to just be able to move on. So we five, very quick look at our roster. Didn't really change a whole lot, given the fact that it was Super Bowl or bust type year. That's what happens when you swing and miss on your top two free agency picks in year five. So the offensive line comes back exactly the same. Tight ends, the same. Skill position players, the exact same. Nothing has changed outside of the overalls. Trevor Lawrence, 95 X-Factor, 89 X-Factor for Chark, 97 for J-Rob. Would be pretty cool if he can get that 99 club before the season is over. Defensively, we look at the best linebacking core in the NFL. I think both Allen and Thibodeau have a chance at entering the 99 club. Maybe even Miles Jack, but he's at that point, he's probably slowing down in terms of development. Front three, we added Stephon to it late in free agency. That is, is definitely a big time get especially to improve our run defense, which for a very dominant team that were pretty much top 10 and everything, our run defense was the weakest element. Secondary is still pretty damn good, even though our safeties, at least in terms of a year five for a rebuild, are slightly underwhelming. Let's go. Playoffs, 12 wins minimum. Get that Super Bowl. All right, so something pretty cool. We had two dev trade scenarios. A little bit of up and down season, but Josh Allen is now a superstar X Factor. Hit on it. We beat the Raiders. Can't remember the exact score. F kicked the shit out of the Raiders. 45 to 7. So we hit the dev trait there. We also have Trevon Walker on the defensive line looking for a dev trait. And he has achieved it. So he's getting off normal up to a star plus 10,000 XP boost. A massive week in terms of additions to our defense. We're 4 and 3. First place in the South. Maybe a little bit off pace of getting 12 wins. But you know, whatever, man. I'll take an AFC South title, whatever way we can get it. So at the end of year five, even though we did lose week 18 to a good box team, we finished the year 12 and four, which was our goal, one game ahead of the Colts. So that is, I think, our second AFC South title, maybe third. I think it's two because, hey, I've you know, been a couple hours since I last recorded this. Uh, but it is an AFC South title in our final year, which is always something pretty nice. And we get to take on the Titans, which looks like a winnable game. Looking at the stats here, big picture, not seeing anyone on our squad, but that's fine. Still could have had decent years. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, fifth in passing, fourth in passing touchdowns. 4,700 passing yards, 37 touchdowns, 10 picks. Maybe his best year? Like, is he peaking at the right time? 47. Uh, well, I, I would argue that one there, year two, but still, good year for him. Not like he's regressing. We've seen quarterbacks regress in year five for some unknown reason. 1,600 yards, 20 touchdowns for James Robinson, who has been an absolute god. I do need to knock him off X-Factor which he earned, and I just let him kind of get that XP because I really wanted him to get to a 9 overall. But now that we're going to be hopping into games, let's just give him the dev trait that he didn't cheese. What's well, not even cheese? Like, he got glitched to, I think is the fairest way to say it. But my God, James Robinson has been probably the MVP of this, re of, of, you know, look at this. Since we had him, okay, year one, year one, a little bit mulligan. But since then, you know, copy and paste, that is his stat line. He's going to get you like 1,400 yards and 20 touchdowns every single year. It's godlike. 12 and 8 for Chark, 1011 for Ezard, 1009 for Chanel. So we're getting all of our guys firing on all cylinders. DC from the tight end. And J Rob, defensively, 100 tackles for Miles Jack. We got 13 sacks, Cave on Thibodeau, 10 from Josh Allen, who earned rightfully his X Factor. Um, eight and a half for Stefan Tuitt, five for Walker. Four picks, huge leading the team, who's, you know, he's been good. I think all things considered, Mike Hughes signed it was like a 77 overall. Since we brought him in, I mean, he's been consistent. And obviously that 2023 year with the four picks was his best year, but he's been performing at a pretty good uh, level. And I absolutely just botched that. That was not his actual picks. I was looking at the wrong, I think I was looking at TFLs, which oddly enough, maybe that's why subliminally I thought. Someone told me that that is what kind of dictates corners getting dev traits, like in the off season based off their stats. It's TFLs and PBUs is what I've been told. Uh, but yeah, point being, the last two years, Mike Hughes, nine picks the last two seasons. Absolutely. 11 total in four years. That is a great return on investment on what was really a mid-range free agency signing. A little of the yearly, uh, yearly awards here for year five. Pat Mahomes is the MVP. J-Rob coming in at number nine. In the AFC, do we have any outright award winners? I don't think so. Unfortunately not. But that doesn't matter because overall, individually, might not have the individuals. But overall, we have the team that is going to go the distance, start from the wild card, get all the way to the Super Bowl, and first thing is first, it is the 9-8 and eight Tennessee Titans. Let's get it. All right, over to Jive. Good stop from the defense, not giving up a full touchdown. Oh, I thought that was going to be a pick, DJ Chark. Too much speed. Big time. 
up to the red zone. So this is just kind of what our offense is, right? Just bomb it downfield and let James Robinson punch it in for the touchdown. And, oh, that's a good tackle. Get off me, baby. Oh, fights his way in. J-Rob gets the opening score of the game. No, that's a... That's a ridiculous pick by Trent McDuffie. Let's go, Chark. 95 speed, bud. You should not be getting caught from behind. Oh, come on. Still a huge play. Don't think so. J-Rob kind of faints his way in the end zone. Still counts as the Jags regain the lead. Oh, no. Get it. Ah, what? Cervix with the half tackle. Let's go. There's a almost touchdown. Slant. Hey, we're losing. It's first round of the playoffs. Gonna do whatever it takes. Here we go. Hat trick. James Robinson got like 27 yards, but three touchdowns. It's all, you know. What's more valuable? The tutties. Defense does not get a stop. My quarterback's in his X Factor. You should, like that? Those animations should not be enabled while your quarterback's in the X Factor. I know it's not the Lamar Jackson fumble one, but like that's an animation-based like sack fumble. It's not like I got jacked. That wasn't like I was running carelessly. Uh, whatever. Defense gonna stop. Let's go win it. Fucking motherfucker, come on! I'm gonna play his defense, try to get a field goal stop. Fuck me. Come on. Come on, baby. Save the season. Save the rebuild! Alright, first and goal. Let's keep it with T Law here. Onside kick to save the rebuild. This is why we, we signed Jack Fox. That looks good. Fuck you! Well... Could have done without the fumbles. You know? Interceptions happen. Could have done without the f fumbles. Uh, the next rebuild... Uh, someone uh, pleaded to me. Because this was voted on by Twitter. But the next rebuild will be the Cincinnati Bengals. I said I'd get to them. Um, yeah, it's brutal. I don't know. Made it close in the end. It was just, yeah, those two fumbles. I, I still can't believe they got that, like, fumble animation RNG bullshit while Trevor Lawrence was at his X Factor. I, that's just, ah. Like, they gotta have, like, if the, I think it was Fletcher Cox that was on that. Like, he gotta have his X Factor to get that to happen. Like, what, what's the roll of the dice that, like, that actually comes to fruition? We just experienced it. So, um, yeah, that will do it. Hey, whatever. It's 1.30. I got kids. I can go to bed now, which is good news. But, unfortunately, if you're hoping to get a Jags Super Bowl victory, all you got was a really good Jags team. And, uh, you know, is what it is, man. We will be back. Uh, playing, I probably will actually drop that Bengals rebuild on the weekend. So I will see you guys then. Thank you very much for watching. As always, first time stop by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. We'd love to hit a thousand likes on today's video. And I'll see you guys back here on the next one. Peace out.